me. My God, it's 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 fucking Cyclone. Oh my God, it's me. Oh my fucking God. I'm not smart. Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Cyclone Hunter, and before this video starts, I want to give you guys a little update on um, some things because I feel like some people were expecting some stuff. No, nobody said anything. It's just... It was uncommon at the time, so I wanted to let you guys know stuff real quick. So recently, I've been, I was uploading Beacon Pines every other day, and that's how they were coming out. Here's the thing, my editor decided to finally start working with me with Beacon Pines. Um, no, I was having trouble on episode 3 a little bit to where it was having trouble, uh, it was just having trouble just fucking working in general at the end. And then it started doing that with episode 4 to where it took a couple days, but that's not the only thing that had happened there as well. My luck was running out because the editor was fucking up and then my hands were fucking up. They were fucking up so bad to where I couldn't even play a video game. It was, it, it was pretty scary because when I was playing Overwatch, because I, okay, so I hold it like this and then when I put it down, I put it down, but my hand was stuck like, <laughs> my hand was stuck like this. I was like, oh my God, to where uh, I felt like I just needed to really work on my hands in this case, or like my nerves. But that's uh, pretty much what made the videos come off a little bit late. Now, if you guys want to know what's going on, like behind the scene wise, I recommend going to my Twitter. The reason I say that is because my Twitter is where I've been posting a lot more, even like on some little situations here and there. That or my TikTok, honestly, but I don't really update on my TikTok. My TikTok is purely rants or my opinions on certain topics that are going around on TikTok or just the internet in general. So. That's all my TikTok's for. My Twitter is for updates for the YouTube channel and also when videos are going to be up. Because the last couple episodes with Beacon Pines, I have posted on my Twitter that those are going out on Twitter. Like I said, oh, they're fully uploaded. Come check it out. So if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, if you guys use Twitter a lot and not really look at YouTube for like updates and stuff like that, I recommend going to my Twitter because I do go out and throw the link to where you guys can click it, come straight to the YouTube channel and watch the video. I am seeing that a lot of people are enjoying Beacon Pines, and I appreciate that. So I do want to keep you guys in the loop. So if you guys want that, go on down my Twitter, follow me there, because you guys will get updates and then small little like things that are going on with me in the middle of the day if you want to. Check that. If you guys don't give a shit about that, yeah, just, just I guess just hit the bell on YouTube and stuff. I mean, I don't know what y'all want from me. Bye. Yeah, I say if anything, let's go... Well, actually, I want to try this now. Yeah, we're, we're going to go back a bit. I just want to see what this, this does. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something. Anything that could help. His hands found a hard object. Maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me... Go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Oh, shit. Chapter 3 I changed the whole course. Oh, fuck, I dude. Fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Dude, hold up. This is gonna mind fuck me here. So, with this part, we're back in chapter three. We're gonna see if something changes this time. Because now... Rolo is uh, able to be talked. Rolo's a thing. Rolo's safe now because he was not in. He was no way, shape, or form in harm. Um, what's her name? Safe as well because Kerr took her home, and we don't know if Kerr probably like fucked up shit. So this this is technically a good option. Let's see what happens. I just finished sharing a message jam last night. Oh, we get to see if this shit changes. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, uh, Rolo had things to do, so I just sort of poked around town. I set the jam down by the front door. 
There's two patches to drop off. Mm -hmm. One of us, the travelers at, at the bag and wag. Deliver jam to Mr. Oh, but see, wait. The phone call never happened. This is interesting. The phone call never happens in this timeline. So because of this, oh my God. So is the whole town in on it? The whole town could be in on it. Because if the whole town's in on it, yeah, because, dude, if the whole town's in on it, it actually benefits the town because the town will have fucking crops to where they can sell it outside of town, making a fucking fortune. Fucking insane. Another for Mrs. Fratelli at the diner. Oh, and Mr. Nuncred? He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a peculiar interest in my mm, jam. There's some extras in the basket at the enthusiastic gentleman. Oh, there are some extras in the basket for the enthusiastic gentleman. Yeah. Just to make sure Fatili and Trolla get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now while the day is still young. Interesting. Because there's no phone call at all of now. Interesting. Oh, what's going on here? You know, it's Juniper Heart Ford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is, we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. Interesting. Very interesting uh, developments now. There's Loro. Okay! Sorry about yesterday. Doxy can be so annoying. At least you're fucking fine this time. But good news! No more boring chores for me today! Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So... What did you find? Give me the dirt! Look, something happened there. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I know it! I knew it'd be aliens. I fucking knew it. No. Zombies? <laughs> no. Alien zombies? What else could be? Could it possibly be? Rolo, I gotta deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Ooh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we, sh we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. Oh my god. Meet me at Mission Control. Dodger that, Space Cadet. Alright, so let me go deliver these things. Nobody's here. Hey, you're right here today. What's up? Wait, what's this up? Oh, sorry. There was a whole family of beetles here. They've gone missing. I thought they just sort of wandered around. Everyone has a home, Luca. Even beetles. Luca checked the soles of his sandals. I think we're okay. It's weird that you're gone. It's weird that they're gone. You went missing when the festival preparations began. Think the noise scared them away? Eh, something like that. Just watch where you step, okay? Alright. Alright, so I gotta take one to the diner, take one to... Oh, can I talk to you? Yes. Anger from the past, mistakes not yet made. And glimmering a hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh, heavens, what a burden to bear. Yeah, sure, whatever. 
Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time to chat. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune. Ooh. Had a way of making questions seem like demands. True. Certainly! What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. That's not good. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes! That is the news of the day! But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in this town's future rather than any one family in peculiar. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know change is a dangerous. If you finish that thought... I will make the monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Uh, good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Dude, props to you. I don't know how the fuck you did that. Hey Don, how you doing? Hey Don. Hey. Hey Don. Hey Luca, what's up? Don had dreams of becoming a big time at night. Oh, did I not? Oh, I didn't talk to her. Oh, they got. They got to do the damn delivery. Eh? Yep. Hey Don, have you noticed anything weird around town lately? I thought that weird thing. Uh, stuff going on at the old Valentine Building. Hmm. You might say I've heard something. I'm looking at a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't tell you quite yet. I don't need to follow up on a few leads. Give me in the loop, okay? Third thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? Hmm? New kid? Oh, what's her name? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Her parents both got jobs there. I get this. One of them is working for William Kerr and... Prenil and... Neil Harvest? And the other is working for the Harris Valentine! <clears throat> and? The Valentines represent Beacon Pines past! Neil Harvest has pushed, in, pushed this in his death of the town's Pitta! 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 I need to stop talking like that. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversation. I can imagine. Hmm. Interesting! Hello! I have arrived! 360s. Hey lady, how you doing? So you're involved in this too, I just realized. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam, Lana. Hey, Miss Fertilli. Look at she you. Forward and pinched Luca's cheek. Ah, you're all skin and bones! Is your grand not feeding you? Uh, she is, just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help out of the diner. <laughs> See that picture over there? This you helping your mama back in the day. So cute running around, your little apron talking notice. The whole situation just breaks my heart. What happened with Eleanor? Break. Ooh. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere yearning to be your being with you again. Yeah. You thing in this world can keep a mother from her thug. Uncomfortably. Oh. oh yes, let's see here. Lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Oh, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Hmm. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. 
How you doing, Mr. Mr. Mayor? How you doing? If I could just be left alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that. No. Mr. Kurz asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. Charismatic? Yeah. Oh. Truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Yes. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family. Our legacy. That's stupid. Man, it sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, my guy. I like it. Here, you want some jam? You want, 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 want some jam? <laughs> you want that jam, baby? Take the jam! Who wants the jam? Who wants it? Uh, who else I got to deliver it to? Okay, it's delivered to Mr. Trolliver. Who the fuck is Mr. Trolliver? Is it down here, maybe? Yeah, here it is. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. <gasps> Dude, I'm gonna smack that shit in front of him. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. I'm gonna touch the shit out of that goddamn fucking watermelon. Hello? Hey! Yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sigh. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, no bother. <laughs> No bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you have something for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, Grant had some jam I'm supposed to give you. He leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. You wrote your name on him. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. Okay. I shall put it on my store shelves post haste! Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Of course! Of course, of course. <laughs> he leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. Okay, what the fuck am I smacking you with? Not a way to kick <laughs> I was wondering what the fuck was I doing to it? I thought I was hitting you with my, like, dick or some shit. <laughs> I fucking kicked the belly. Okay, so this should be the last delivery. I got some jam for you, Mr. Nuncred. Welcome. You seem um, chipper. Mm. Ah, well, aside from being one delivery duty, it's a nice day. Mr. Nuncred eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. What if you're the guy in the hazmat suit? You sort of fit the, like, whole physique. I suppose it is. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, do you want your jam? Alright, yeah. Mm, yeah. Usually Juniper drops those off her shelf. Mm, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, I guess she's busy today. Anyways, uh, this is my last delivery for the day. Oh, um, in that case. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll hold on to the basket until the next time I see your grand. Mmm. It's gonna pull all that hair, you know what I mean? Okay, yuck, 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 gotcha, got it, got, whoa. Hey, you! Uh, anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. 
Pineapple? Why? How old are you? Twelve. Perfect, follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Bitch, you over here just telling me to follow you. I mean, I already know who you are, but still! Just try to keep up, okay? What just happened? Well, fuck it. Woo! Some pussy! <laughs> Wait, are y'all her mom? Her mom's? Mom's. Yeah, are y'all two her mom's? Oh, wow, what a crazy coincidence! Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we j just hit it off. Oh, really? Uh, get this? His favorite pizza topping in the whole world is... Pineapple. Oh, uh... uh oh, what is your new little friend's name? Beck locked eyes with Luca. <laughs> the look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Uh, Luca Van Horn. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly. This is Elora. Who are Beck's parents? Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Beck told me all about you. <laughs> Already feels like we've known each other for years. So, you both can't stop obsessing me with making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunt development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. <laughs> what Nelly means is that we just want this move to be as easy for you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Look up, you must join us for dinner tonight. I already met the parents and apparently I'm already eating dinner with them. Fuck! Dinner? Wow! Another coincidence! I actually already asked him and he said he'd love to! Uh, it, it's just, uh... Wonderful! In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You don't get into too much trouble now. Ew, 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 ew. Murder! Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all, but they could be much sometimes. A house is the little cottage next to that big mansion place. Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. What do you mean by their big creepy gate? Don't be late. Or oh, I'm back to square one on the whole friend gift. Grift. <laughs> Great. See you there. Where the fuck is that? Me back at the big creepy gate. Oh, wait. Don't I still have to go talk to Roro? Oh, no. I guess I just go over there. Okay. Well, let's go talk to her then. Whoa. Who are you? Morning, Geoff. Why's well, all good about it? Not a day further down the tube, if you ask me. Oh, come on now, it's not all bad. The festival's coming up. Mm, the festival! Ah, old man rather tired you to put on a cockamane shot at all the time. <clears throat> Where did I get us? Well, it's perennial harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it. <clears throat> I never trained the old Valentine company in a new perennial harvest outfit. Dug through his pockets for a bit. Okay. Uh, I never trained that out the soap can. Yay! It's too damn bad. <laughs> it is brown banana. But those are both garbage. It's too damn bad. Exactly, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I love you. Well, that's too damn bad. Okay, so I'm assuming this way? Sure. Whoa. So, who all lives in that house? Uh, 
Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. That creepy kid in the vest? Oh, that sounds like the one. So just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Uh, not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Yeah, pretty much. Ah, what a waste. Yeah, my mom says that it used to be way busier. Back before Sharper died. For the foul harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone's mentioned the foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually, you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Oh. This is pretty nice. <clears throat> uh, honestly, most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? I don't know, you look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simple as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. <laughs> Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Luke took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Ludwills.